Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Rockstead Wren, sporting a beautiful mirror polished convex tanto blade. Uh, not too many companies doing a convex tanto folding knife. That's true. Uh, and on top of that, we have Rockstead's beautiful mirror finish and their absolutely insane uh, 67 Rockwell ZDP 189 blade. If you didn't know, um, Rockstead knives boast some of the best, um, you know, edge performance that we see in the knife world. And, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, but do people actually use those? And the answer is yes. Uh, the gentleman who sent this to me, his name is Thomas. Thank you very much, Thomas, for loaning this to me for review. It'll go back to Thomas when I'm done. Um, he said, hey, it's going to be a user, so go ahead and carry it and use it, whatever. And I have been. Uh, it's been great. I actually also own uh, a Rockstead. This is my Higo 2, which um, has I've actually managed to put some marks on and break the tip <laughs> off of. But um, these things really do like hold an edge forever. The only thing I have ever done, and I'm not even really sure that this knife ever needed it, the only thing I've ever really done is strop this blade. Um, and I think that's the beauty of... Um, not that I am a master of blade geometry or anything like that, but this thing strops so easily, and I, you know, I didn't use the uh, the, the the Ren uh, enough to really be able to say. Um, but uh, the nice thing about knives like this is that they strop back to life so so readily, and they just stay unbelievably sharp for so long. But are they actually worth the price tag? Because man, are they expensive. Um, this is actually available right now. So I'll, I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. It is insanely expensive. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Uh, thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and I put my tape measure away. So I'm getting it back out. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. Overall length is coming in at eight and a quarter, maybe a little longer if you count that little backspacer back there. It's like 8.35, but I'm going to say eight and a quarter. Blade length is three and a half inches on the dot cutting edge. That can't be right. It's actually, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm incorrect. It's about 3.6 inches and the cutting edge is exactly three and a half inches. Let's do some uh, size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat. Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see there that uh, it's a full-size knife. Definitely closer to the size of the Rat 1. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? All righty. How, uh, how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? There we go. And maybe let's do the... let's Yeah, let's do the Benchmade Bugout and the Benchmade Group Tillander in this case... The Ritter Hogue. Uh, very similar overall size to the Ritter Hogue. It just looks a little, it is slightly longer because of that backspacer. Um, and then we'll put it up against, because it's the only other rocks that I have here, the Higo. Uh, this is the Higo 2, actually. And depending on which one you have on top, you know, the one on the bottom always looks a little bit bigger. But truthfully, these are about the same size. They just have a different presence. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the action. Like, I, you know, I haven't handled all of the Rocksteads. Um, but like many of them, it, it runs on washers and it runs nice and smooth. I would say it runs, it doesn't run quite as tight as like a Chris Reeve knife. There's nothing wrong with a Chris Reeve knife. They just don't run quite as smooth or consistent. It is not going to feel like a knife on bearings. If you have gotten used to the luxuriously smooth action uh, of a knife that runs on bearings, this does not feel the same way. But they're smooth enough that you can easily deploy the knife with the thumb studs, which are very comfortable. I think you can actually, yeah, you can actually get a reverse flick if you've muscled up that middle finger. If you use this finger a lot for other activities, <laughs> then, then um, yeah, or if you practice, you know, flipping a lot. Um, but um, yeah, the, the action's um, great for phosphor bronze. I think that some people will be not as impressed with it. It depends on what you're used to, but it, it's fine. Uh, access to the lock bar is also pretty good. Um, it's got a little teeny tiny bit of stick, nothing bad though. 
Uh, there is a lock bar insert. We'll talk more about that. But yeah, access to the lock bar is good. Uh, and engagement is, or disengagement is reasonably comfortable. There's a couple of sharp edges, which we will also talk about. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here, um, this guy is about the same thickness, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Um, it's fairly tall, almost the same height as the, uh, the Para 3 there. Definitely um, a little closer in closed length to the PM2, not quite the same. Uh, truthfully, this wasn't really a bother to carry. I, I didn't notice that it was a whole lot different than like my Higo. And it's, you know, for some people it might be a little bit large. Um, but it, it does carry lighter than you might think. And that's because the front scale is carbon fiber. I actually haven't weighed them both. I, I feel like the Higo 2 is heavier here. Um, but we'll weigh them here in a sec. What are we looking at for materials? We are looking at carbon fiber, titanium, and ZDP-189. Um, now, I, I don't think it's any secret that the vast majority of the cost goes into the blade. Um, but believe me, we will talk about that price tag. Um, but that's it for the materials. There's really nothing else super crazy going on there. Um, so let's go ahead and weigh it. 4.37 ounces. Yeah, really not bad. I want to say that he go, the, this has to weigh more. Yeah, about half an ounce, a little, little less than half an ounce more. So 4.37 ounces is not bad at all. I don't think that's a problem. Had they done it in full titanium, it absolutely, obviously, would have weighed more. Let's go ahead, uh, go, ha go ahead and get out my tools for a hardware check. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools that I use on this channel. I think that pivot is, it looks like a T10. So that's what we're gonna try first here. Yeah, it is. Now the hardware is almost certainly going to be a T8. We'll just, this is a T8. I'm not gonna bother finding the thing on there. I just know that that's a T8. Yeah, so these are T8. And then you've got the Chicago ends over here. So really, construction's very simple. There's a hidden screw for the pocket clip, and then you have a T6 for the uh, lock bar insert screw. Uh, but much like the uh, Higo 2, which is something that it, it really is very Chris Reevy <laughs> in disassembly. I have taken this thing completely apart and put it back together multiple times. They are unbelievably simple to take apart, which is something that's really great because oftentimes what you get with an ultra expensive knife is a complicated, a disassembly that is either so complicated that it just makes you, right? Or they just flat out don't want you in there. Rockstead knives, you know, I'm not sure how their warranty goes with this assembly. I, I think it's okay to disassemble them. I, I feel like I remember that being the case. Make sure and check though, before you buy, make sure you can check, uh, because they may have changed it since the last time that I reviewed a Rockstead. Um, but they, uh, it's, it's very, very easy to take these things apart. Uh, and if this one is, this one doesn't appear to actually have come with any tools or anything like that. Um, but perhaps it did and he just didn't include them. Uh, this is just a spec sheet. I was looking at another piece of paper in there. Um, but yeah, this one, my, uh, Higo 2 came with tools, like, you know, go ahead and do it. So I, I couldn't imagine that this is any different. It looks really, really simple and they're not using any proprietary hardware that would suggest that they don't want you inside, right? So as long as you have good quality tools, a place to put the hardware so you don't lose it, you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness here. It's not necessarily an overly thick blade, but it's definitely not thin either. I'm going to guess that's 150. No, it's 140, it says 143 thousandths, okay. So, meat and potatoes time. It's a good looking knife, nice aggressive tanto. I am, um, I'm gonna be honest, I'm less than impressed with the carbon fiber scales. It's neat that we have these little lines in here, right? Um, the, the Higo is substantially more impressive, both in appearance and I think in just machining quality. This, these are titanium liners and carbon fiber scales that kind of look almost like wood, um, but the way that they have machined them and polished them and finished them, they feel so smooth and rounded at the edges. It feels so nice. The Higo 2 is beautiful. It's beautifully done. Now, 
the Rockstead Wren, its blade is certainly no less impressive, right? That's absolutely just as impressive. But the scales are nowhere near as impressive. This, they almost look like an afterthought. Honestly, this looks like something that you might see on a Kershaw knife. Dead serious from the handle down, it kind of looks like a Kershaw. And while on the other side, the titanium is interesting in areas, we actually have some little teeny tiny, I thought that like it was picking up my fingerprints, but they're like little milling lines in here, right? It's kind of neat. It's like uh, blasted in some areas, more polished than others. It's kind of neat. Still though, you know, for the price of this thing, and again, you know, right on their website, they really want you to know, like, hey, not too many people are doing a convex tanto, and they're right. That, that's that's a big deal, right? I mean, if you're not familiar with the knife world, they're they're correct. Uh, and part of a lot of the edge performance comes from the fact that they do a convex zero edge. It comes down to literally nothing, right? Face reveal. I saw his face. I, guys, my face is in lots of thumbnails, but I it's I'm glad that you're excited about it. That's cool. I mean, high five through the screen, right? You saw my face. Um, but, uh, yeah, it comes down to a zero edge and it is ridiculously sharp and it will stay ridiculously sharp because of the, the edge stability benefits that you get with a convex grind instead of a flat or hollow grind, right? Um, so ZDP 189 has incredible, uh, potential edge retention, um, but it can, you know, achieve much higher uh, levels of Rockwell hardness, right? If you're wondering, like, why don't we, if, if the edge retention is so great, why don't we just harden M390 to 67? Because you end up with something that would shatter like glass. But ZDP 189 uh, still has really, really great toughness. Uh, it doesn't have nearly the same level of corrosion resistance, right? Because composition is a multi-directional teeter-totter. But at 67 Rockwell, ZDP 189, while certainly nowhere near the toughest steel out there, is substantially tougher um, than something like M390, right? So you get unbelievable levels of edge retention, especially when you couple the fact that the edge has been convex ground and has it's it's got a zero edge on it. You know that's that's why they're able to boast such incredible levels of. I mean, this thing will literally outperform pretty much anything on the market, and, and we'll we'll do it without breaking a sweat. They really are amazing blades. It's not it's not marketing. They're absolutely incredible. Um, so the blade, as per usual, is absolutely stunning. It looks amazing. They did an excellent job. There's just not quite anything else. I mean, that's been this way for a long time. This The Rockstead blade is so instantly recognizable, right? The little fuller with a hole in it and how they do their mirror polish, right? Uh, I love the, um, the second finish on the flat. It just looks so beautiful in contrast with the mirror polish. And I didn't even, this thing's still got like marks and fingerprints and things on it. So sorry about that. But they always look incredible. And they poke every single one of them to make sure they do their own testing right there. So you can see the little mark. Same way with my uh, Higo. I think my mark is like down here, right? Um, but yeah, the blade looks beautiful. There's nothing wrong there. Just perfect. Fit and finish on the blade itself is absolutely stunning. I love the little notch up here behind this. It's almost like a harpoon notch. I love the swedge. The tanto looks awesome. Adds another, just another level of appreciation because we've got that, you know, angle in there. Um, obviously, these things would be very difficult to sharpen on your own. Uh, you can send them back to Rockstead. And a lot of people ask me, why haven't you sent this back to have it like reprofiled and have the tip put back on there? And, you know, because it's expensive. <laughs> and I know I'll be without it for a long time, right? Uh, you also have to ship it to Japan, which, you know, shipping a knife overseas, I'm, you know, a little hesitant to do that. Um, so I, I have lost personally a, a very expensive knife. Um, it came. It didn't come from Japan or wasn't going to Japan, but uh, I, you know I've, I've lost one, so I'm a little hesitant there. Um, can you real quick? Can you deploy this knife using the little fuller, right? Because you have access to it right here. Can you deploy it using the fuller? I think if your finger is incredibly powerful, I mean, if you go to the gym and you have like a middle finger day, then perhaps. But I cannot do it, and I am also very terrified of the edge. It's 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 very sharp, so I don't really want to accidentally get my finger underneath there. Blade's really good. Functionally, I mean, ergonomically, um, your hand will go into these slots, but I, I gotta be honest, the edges, all of these edges right here, 
God, you can see my dead skin catching on this incredibly sharp ledge, which is also where you're choking up. The edges feel so unfinished. This is a substantially less impressive handle versus the Higo, uh, the Higo 2. Um, it just doesn't feel finished. The pocket clip is sharp. Um, in and out of the pocket, you know, the retention is, is fine, but you got to fight this clip a little bit. It's just every edge is just a lot sharper than you would expect. Uh, it's it's fine. I mean, if, you, if you're like, I really, really want that blade, I don't really care as long as the... The handle skills are super duper comfortable. I'm sorry, as long as the handle skills are just like reasonably comfortable, like a C plus, then I'm okay. Well, then okay, right? But I am just incredibly underwhelmed by the scales. I thought this is one of those knives where I looked at the price and I was like, I know that these are expensive because of the blade. Like, I mean, we can't pretend, right? I mean, there's there's always going to be people going, you know, even with the mirror polished blade and the it shouldn't be more than two hundred dollars. And you are wrong. You are incorrect. At 100%, right? You, you know, you might know a Joe Schmo down the street who can put kind of a halfway kind of ding-dong polish on a blade. and bit, But he, he's not going to be doing this for under 200 But it's just not going to happen, period. But I thought, with that price tag, though, there's got to be something else going on with this knife that I don't know about. Apparently not. It's carbon fiber, titanium, and their typical mirror polish ZDP. It's a cool Tanto blade, but it's just the CDP, right? Um, I'm just extremely disappointed in the just nothingness. Like, the, the scales are just not great. It really legitimately looks like something that you might get from Kershaw, all right? Um, if Kershaw did, like, a carbon fiber. Like, especially the carbon fiber side really makes me think Kershaw. Um, and there's nothing, I mean, I, I like Kershaw, but Kershaw's not making $2,200 knives, right? If I haven't said the price yet. So, um, backspacer is raised a little bit. There's some jimping here, jimping on the back of the carbon fiber scales and uh, the titanium. Um, we have a little lanyard hole back here. You can put a lanyard in there. The pocket clip is milled and the backspacer is a full chunk of titanium. So that's that's good, at least, right? Um, in and out of the pocket, I mean, the retention is very heavy, so it's a little tight, but it's fine. Um, the pocket clip does at least go along with the theme of the knife. I mean, it does, it looks like it matches. It doesn't look like it was an afterthought, like the, the Higo, the poor Higo. It just, look at this, it just says made in Japan, just a simple clip, right? But it's functional, right? This is a much more comfortable clip than this guy. So depends on what you're after. There is a lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. So that's nice. Uh, there's a, a stop pin located in its traditional position. Uh, there's no shouldering, but it doesn't need it. Lockout is absolute. I've never had an issue with lockout on a Rockstead ever. Like I said, a little bit of lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. Very consistent in here for, you know, your phosphor bronze washers. It's got a nice detent. This is cool. Uh, I have no idea where they're getting the $2,200 price tag. You know, Rocksteads have always had this kind of like, yeah, they're really, really cool to look at, but nobody's actually using them and they're massively overpriced. I think that's just the simplest way to look at it. Um, I disagree with that to an extent. Um, they are expensive, but I think it's, I mean, if you, if you like actually allow yourself to pay attention to the testing that's been done and like they can prove that their blades outperform essentially everything. <laughs> they, they really, I, I mean, are, are, I mean, not just in terms of like sharpness, right? We're talking edge retention and maintenance. Uh, they really will go for years without actually needing to be resharpened. Um, and that's pretty cool. Do, do, do you need that? No. The vast majority of people on the planet don't need that. It's This is still an enthusiast level knife. Um, but if you're thinking like, I, I, I kind of want a Rockstead. Like, is this the one? Uh, no. In my opinion, absolutely not. I mean, I, I think still like the, the titanium frame lock... It, you don't need this version. I don't. I, I said when I reviewed this years ago. I don't understand why this guy's two hundred bucks more than its titanium frame lock brother, which at the time I think was like twelve hundred, and now it's like thirteen fifty. Everything has gone up. So they're expensive, but you can literally get the same thing with the base Higo, and it's full titanium. 
arguably a more impressive, um, you know, scale finish, a, a more impressive knife all the way around, and it's eight hundred and fifty dollars less. You can even get some of the smaller ones, uh, the smaller uh, uh, Rocksteads for a little less money uh, than, than even the Higo, right? I mean, some of the least expensive Rocksteads actually come in a couple hundred under the Higo too. Um, so I, that's cool that they did the Tanto. Uh, that's neat. I'm not, I'm not really interested in paying, um, you know, $850 more than a Higo 2, right, or the, the Higo frame lock. Uh, just really confused by that. This did perform exactly the same way that I expected it to. There's really, there is something special about cutting with a Rockstead. It feels different. It, the, the way that material glides over that context mirror polished blade. Con, did I say context? Convex mirror polished blade. Can't even remember what I said. Zero edge. It just feels different, right? It's just a beautiful cutting machine. Awesome. And you know, if your grail is a Rockstead knife, I think that's a good grail because there really isn't a whole lot out there that's that's like a Rockstead. I love mine and I carry it. I still to this day don't feel like mine was worth the fifteen hundred that I paid for it. Um, I, it seems more like a twelve hundred dollar knife to me, alongside the you know the the Higo Frame Lock. Um, this one is even worse. Um, it's neat, but I. <laughs> not even to collectors. Like, I mean, there's no part of me is going to pretend like, oh, I'm going to recommend this to a regular person just looking for a good pocket knife. Obviously not. It's a $2,200 knife, right? But even to collectors and enthusiasts, um, no. No, not not even close. Cool knife. Loved uh, having the opportunity to carry and use it. But man, uh, I think they're just way out of line with the price tag. So... That's what I think. I'm hoping that Rockstead releases some more stuff in the future that's more around the... Um, I, I want to see more full-size stuff that's around the same price point as their uh, their Higo. That just makes more sense to me. Um, but anyways, that's going to be pretty much it today. Uh, this was a fun one to look at, so thank you again to Thomas for loaning it to me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.